In our last video, we talked about the structure of the cell membrane and how molecules move in and out of the cell through the membrane, either by active transport or passive transport. Today, we're going to talk about specifically one of the types of passive transport called osmosis. But first, remember in passive transport how molecules move in or out of the membrane but without energy being needed. And those molecules during passive transport move from an area of high to low concentration across the membrane called down the gradient. And with osmosis being a type of passive transport, those things still apply. So no energy is needed and the molecules will move from where there's a high to low concentration. But with osmosis, as hopefully you remember, osmosis is simply the diffusion of water molecules across that membrane. And they're moving from an area where there's a lot of water molecules to where there's less water molecules. So from a high to low concentration. In the picture, we could see in these strawberries, which are covered with sugar, and you could see that the strawberries are sitting within their juice, that's because there's a high concentration of sugar on the outside of those cells. Therefore, the water wants to move to that area because there's less water there. We're going to find out that the different concentrations inside and outside of a cell will cause water to move in or out of cells. Tonicity is a comparison of the amount of solute on the inside versus the outside of the cell. This will determine where water moves. Water will move towards the area of higher solute concentration. In other words, water moves to an area where there's a high concentration of solute. Water moves to where there's more stuff. The higher concentration, that's where water loves to move. And if water's moving, it's called osmosis. There are three things or scenarios that cause water to move. Looking at the pictures down here, here's the first one called hypotonic. Water likes to move, or osmos, to an area where high concentration is of solute. The green dots are the solute. The inside of this orange cell has a higher concentration. So here's a high concentration of solute and here's a low concentration of solute. So water is going to move to an area where there's more solute. So in this scenario, water moves into the cell. The second one is called isotonic. Iso means same. This means that the inside and the outside concentrations of solution are the same strength. In these scenarios, water will move both in and out of the cell. The last one is called hypertonic. Hyper means above or more, and this means that the outside of the cell, the solution on the outside of the cell is hypertonic. Hyper meaning it has more solute, and water likes to move to where there's more stuff. So water will be drawn out of the cell in this scenario. Osmosis works a little bit differently in plants and animal cells, it's going to have a different effect on what happens to them. And that's mainly because of certain cell structures that animals don't have, such as the cell wall and even the central vacuole. Let's take a look at each one of those tonicities that I just talked about more in detail. The first one is going to be called isotonic solution. This means that the solution surrounding the cell is isotonic, iso meaning the same. So the same strength. If we look at the picture, which helps explain it, the outside solution of the cell is at 10% of salt, and the inside of the cell is also at 10%. So they have the same strength. When this situation occurs, water will move in and out of the cell at equal rates. Molecules never stop moving, including water molecules. So they're always moving around, and they will move in and out of the cell at equal rates. So let's take a look at how an isotonic solution affects plant cells differently from animal cells. Plant cells, when they're in an isotonic solution, they, the water will enter and exit the cell at approximately equal rates. But the fact that water's leaving the cell is not a great thing for plants. It makes them what we call flaccid, just a little bit wilted. Plants need water, and they need to hold on to that water and not lose any of it. Animal cells, on the other hand, like this red blood cell, for example, love to be in an isotonic solution. This equilibrium, the inflow and outflow of the water at equal rates, 
creates a normal cell. We say that the cell is maintaining homeostasis, which is that happy internal state that they function best at. So animal cells love to be in an isotonic solution, and plant cells, not really so much. The next one is a hypotonic solution. Hypo means below, so that means whatever's surrounding the cell, the solution surrounding the cell, is below what the solution inside the cell is. So the concentration on the outside is below the inside of the cell. When this occurs, there's more solute on the inside of the cell. Obviously, there's more salt on the inside of the cell in the picture. That's going to cause the water to undergo osmosis and enter the cell. So I remember on this one, hypo, in you go. When a cell is surrounded by a hypotonic solution, water will go into the cell. In a hypotonic solution, a plant cell will be affected a little bit differently than an animal cell again. In an animal cell, animal cells don't, can't really exist in a hypotonic solution. They will eventually burst and die. This is called cytolysis. That's because animal cells, like this red blood cell, don't have cell walls, and there's nothing to prevent them from exploding, called cytolysis. Think of this like a water balloon. Eventually, if you fill it up too much, it creates too much pressure and they burst. However, plant cells love this. This is a plant cell's homeostasis. So in this case, water's entering the cell. The cell's central vacuole is filling up with water, just like a water balloon, but then that water pr makes pressure that pushes the central vacuole against the cell membrane which pushes against the cell wall. The cell wall is so thick and rigid, there's no way it's going to burst, and that internal pressure is called turgor pressure. And that turgor pressure makes the plant turgid, nice and rigid, and healthy. That is where plants love to be. The last one is hypertonic. When a cell is in a hypertonic solution, hyper means above. So the cell is surrounded by a solution that's above what it's solution is inside, its concentration is. So in the case of the picture, we have a hypertonic salt solution that's above the concentration inside the cell. So 10% inside but 20% outside of salt. This is a hypertonic salt solution. Water will move to where there's a hypertonic solution. Water moves to the hypertonic side because that's where there's more stuff and that's where there's a higher concentration of solute. So in this case, water will leave the cell. So in an animal cell and a plant cell, it doesn't matter. Neither of them love to be in a hypertonic solution. Eventually, both the plant and animal cell will die if they're exposed to this because water is leaving both their cells. And in the animal, animal cell's case, it causes the cell membrane to start to shrivel up. And when the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane, starts to shrivel up, the cell will crenate or undergo crenation and die. Plant cells, what will happen is that central vacuole gets depleted of water and the cell membrane kind of pulls away from the cell wall, as you could see, as water leaves. And this will cause that cell membrane to shrivel up inside of the cell wall, which doesn't create any pressure for the cell. That's called turgor pressure. And when that plasma or cell membrane shrivels up, it's called plasmolysis. And that's a severe wilting of the plant that will lead to death. Looking at all three of the tonicities, here's hypotonic. So hypo, in you go, the water's gonna go into the cell. This red blood cell will fill up and eventually burst because it doesn't have a cell wall. And when that happens, it's called cytolysis. The middle one is an isotonic solution where water's entering and, entering and exiting the cell by osmosis at equal rates. And in the case of an animal cell, they love this. So this will create that homeostasis of that cell. And the last one is a hypertonic solution. And in a hypertonic solution, there's a high concentration of solute on the outside, so the water will leave the cell to go to the solute, and the cell will shrivel up and die, or crenate. This compares to plant cells and the animal cells, and it just shows whether if the cells are in an isotonic solution, iso means water is going in and out at the same rate because the concentrations are equal, and animal cells love it, but plant cells become flaccid. In a hypotonic solution, cytolysis will occur because water is going into the animal cell and there's no cell wall, but plants love this. It creates turgor pressure, pressure on the inside that makes them filled with water and nice and healthy. And lastly, hypertonic, where the water leaves the cells 
and in an animal cell's case, they shrivel up and crenate, whereas it's called plasmolysis, or they will plasmalize in plant cells. Both bad situations. Organisms have different ways to deal with osmotic pressure. They're constantly surrounded by environments that are changing. And as water's entering their cells or leaving their cells, they have to have ways to deal with it to maintain their homeostasis. So in plants and bacteria, they have cell walls. As water's coming in and creating a lot of pressure, there's a cell wall that prevents their cells from bursting. This is called turgor pressure, something that you would learn a lot more about in an AP biology class. In certain freshwater organisms like protists, a paramecium for example, they don't have a cell wall and they're constantly taking water into their cells because that fresh water is hypotonic and hypo, in you go. The reason they don't die and they could survive in the pond is because they have special vacuoles called contractile vacuoles. And if you look at the picture, these vacuoles fill up with water and then contract, squeezing out all that excess water. And they're consistently doing this all the time. In animals, it really depends on the species. But if we take a fish that lives in salt water, that salt water is very hypertonic, which means that the water inside of the fish cells should be leaving and they should be shriveling up and dying, but they're not. They're living in salt water. That's because different aquatic and marine organisms have different adaptations that help prevent the, their cells from dying. With a saltwater fish, they're going to have specialized gills and their gills are able to, in essence, filter out the excess salt to prevent their cells from not being exposed to that hypertonic environment. So as the water comes in and goes over their gills, their gills literally filters out their salt. In mammals, like ourselves, our kidneys are the organ that help maintain salt and water balance to make sure that they are always at equilibrium and where they need to be. And the last few examples here, the top picture is showing an IV bag with a solution. When a person is getting an IV, the solution is going directly into their blood stream. And the solution that's going in there needs to be isotonic to what their blood and their blood cells are. If it's not, the person could die because their cells would be exposed to either a hyper or hypotonic solution that would cause the cells to either shrivel or burst. And that could lead to the death of that person. The bottom picture is something that we experience all the time, especially now that we're in winter here in Ohio. During the winter time, with all the snow and the ice, there's salt trucks that throw salt onto the roads. The salt actually goes onto the side on the side of the roads where a lot of plants and vegetation live. But as you can see, these plants on the side of the road are dead. That's because the salt creates a very hypertonic solution. As we mentioned, plants hit, hate hypertonic solution. It causes them to wilt and become flaccid or plasmalized. So it does not create an ideal environmental condition for plants to live where there's a lot of salt. And that's it. Hopefully you learned something about osmosis and tonicity, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.